Michelle, it's the start of another baseball season. Go Dodgers. You know, I think getting Freddie Freeman will put the Dodgers in the World Series again. It will, but I really just love the game of baseball. You know, I still have my Nolan Ryan rookie card. Wow, I wonder what that's worth. I don't know, but we're going to meet someone who has an incredible, unbelievable baseball collection. Better than ours. Let's play ball. I'm Michelle, a longtime realtor. I'm her husband, Mark, a television news anchor. Together, we've started a podcast. And we want to hear from you. So, let's Let's talk. talk. You know, I've never been to Cooperstown, New York, where the Baseball Hall of Fame is, but I have been to Robert Taylor's Museum of Baseball, (laughs) and this is it. (laughs) Robert Taylor Pryor. Wow, this is awesome. Yep. Thank you. This is this is uh, so nice here, and uh, what a great start to the baseball season to see this. For those who are not watching this, (laughs) and listening on on a podcast. Briefly describe what's in this room. Well, it all started in 1976. Uh, started collecting baseball cards, and it just bloomed. To, I started collecting autographs around 1980, and uh, I fell in love with bats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I got to meet my boyhood hero, Johnny Bench, and I got a bat signed by Johnny Bench, and it just went from there. That's cool. And it's just... Uh, so we're surrounded by bats, Baseball cards, posters, um, and you've got some football memorabilia mm-hmm. here. Pictures. Pictures. But, but you're primarily into baseball, baseball, would you say? That's Yes, baseball. Right. That's a good thing because we like baseball. <laughs> <laughs> and your team would be the Dodgers, right? Uh, no. no. <laughs> it's the Yankees. The Yankees. No. My, yeah. my uncle played for oh, the Yankees, no. so I, as a kid, I was a Cincinnati Red fan because of Johnny Bench. Right. Johnny Bench and Pete Rose. Uh, but later on, it was kind of put in my head that I had to be a Yankee fan if right. I wanted to stay in the family. So That's funny. Uh, and your, your uncle is? Cliff Mapes. Okay. He played for the Yankees from 47 to 51. He got traded in mid-season of 51 for some kid to make room on the roster for some kid named Mickey Mantle. You know. There's Uncle Cliff in 1951 greeting rookie Mickey Mantle at home plate after the Mick hit his first Major League home run. Mapes is wearing number seven on his jersey and Mantle number six. Later that season, Mapes was traded to the St. Louis Browns and Mantle was recalled for the minors and was issued number seven. And the rest is history. Mapes made it to St. Louis just in time for one of the biggest publicity stunts in Major League Baseball history. The day three foot seven inch Eddie Goodell was introduced as a hitter. He walked on four pitches. That's Mapes in the dugout with Goodell sitting on his lap. I got my first pack of baseball cards on the Uncle Zeb cartoon camp. Really? Channel 8. Yeah, you bet. 1973, I think it was. And uh, yeah, he actually gave me a couple extra packs. You know, I'm big. I was bigger than all the other, whatever, six or seven year olds there. So I couldn't play in the games because I was too big. <laughs> so I had to sit over there and I was pouting and he gave me a couple extra pack of cards. Aww. Who were the best players in 1973 or became the best players? Oh, you know, Johnny Bench, um, Mike Schmidt, that was his rookie season. Uh, unfortunately, that was 72 was, you know, Roberto Clemente's last year. He got killed on New Year's Day. Right. Uh, um, you know, Pete Rose. One guy who I think should be in the Hall of Fame, Dave Parker. Uh, Willie your, Mays was near dog, his uh, end. Willie Mays was at right. the end of his career. For Hank Aaron was close to the end of his career. Um, you know, you had your Dodgers with Garvey Say, Bill Russell, and, and Davey Lopes, Dusty Baker. Recently, I, I mentioned your name to somebody. I can't remember who it was. And they said, oh, Robert Taylor. He is a go-to guy for baseball memorabilia. So you have, just give us an idea, how many bats do you have here? Well, I was telling you earlier, my nephew has decided everything needs to be cataloged. So he's been coming up on Fridays, his day off. And we've been, we just got through doing the balls and the bats. I uh, have a little over 300 bats. And there are most of them autographed. All of them are signed, yeah, most of them, I'd say. You know, if I got 320, 315 of them are signed. 
How many baseballs? Over 500 signed. 500. We're going to get to who are some of the players who have signed this stuff. And, and baseball cards, how many cards do you have? Um, 150,000 or more. <laughs> I probably have. That's nuts. I probably have over 40,000 baseball cards signed. Right. Okay, let's get into how you got all this stuff signed by the players. What was your technique and method of doing that? Well, luckily, I mentioned my Uncle Cliff. I got him reacquainted with a lot of his old teammates. And uh, so Mickey invited him. Mickey Mantle had a golf tournament every year in, in Joplin, Missouri, Mickey Mantle Classic. Uh, so from, man, 11, 12 years old, hmm. once it, one weekend a year, I got to hang out with Mickey Mantle, Yogi Berra, Whitey Ford, Billy oh my Martin. Gosh, that's you know, crazy. Did, did, you, did you know at the time who you were hanging out with? Yes. Right. Yes. And I, the, I, the, I, the I greats of baseball. And, oh, yeah. I just sit there and be quiet. And that's what I tell everybody now, it's what I miss, is being in the clubhouse at the golf course. And I'm sitting here, Mickey Mantle's sitting here, my uncle's there, Moose Gower and Hank Bauer, Yogi Berra, you know, all of them are sitting around and they're just talking about the old times, wow. telling the stories. You know, I was the, I was the, I was the beer guy. I had to go get the beer and bring it back, you know. <laughs> the kid get in the beer. Yeah, the yeah. kid get in the beer. Yeah. And uh, I, I miss that more than anything is that. And, you know, I, I was lucky. I was lucky to have an uncle that, I always tell he got me on the inside of the ropes instead of on the outside, you know, they had the roped off and, and everything. And uh, so that's how I found out I could order bats from Louisville Slugger. Um, we called and ordered some of my uncle's bats. And I asked him, I said, hey, can I get a Mickey Mantle bat or a Billy Martin bat? He said, yeah, you can get them, but you got to get a permission from them. So at Mickey's golf tournament, I just ask them, you know, tell them I'm, what I was doing, and they'd write me a note to Rex Bradley at Hillard, Hillard and Bradley, give Robert permission to get one of my bats, oh my and so I would send off for him. And when I started doing them, the bats were around twenty bucks. So I think there's like eighteen fifty a piece, and I'd get them, and then the next year I'd go back to the golf tournament and take the bats, and they'd sign them for me. So that's your your start and how you got the autographs. Um, also, tell us a story. Your correspondence, you would send letters to players. I write probably, I send out average 100 a month to ball players, uh, cards, photos, whatever I can find that I want signed. And uh, one of the things I ask them, you know, I ask them about, tell them about me. Uh, ask them to sign my stuff, then I ask them, if you don't mind, would you mind sharing with me your greatest thrill of your career? You know, what was your greatest thrill in your career? And some of them will write back a nice letter. Some of them will just say, you know, playing in the 1966 World Series or, you know, something right. like that. Um, I can't remember the player now. He was just up, maybe played 20 games in the big leagues, but he played with the Yankees. And he said his greatest thrill was playing in left field and looking to his left and seeing Mickey Mantle, my boyhood idol, playing next to me. Mickey Mantle steps in. Going, going, a home run for the Yankees' great slugger. His third in this year's fall classic. First hit off Magley and the first run of the game. The way things turned out, Mickey's blast was enough, though the Yanks did score again in the six. Spine-tingling catches thrilled the onlookers. What are, let's talk about some of your, your greatest finds. Uh, whether it be a baseball card or a bat <laughs> or a baseball. Look at that, that picture with Mickey Mouse. Yeah, we're looking around the walls yeah. here. That's my uncle just passed amazing. Mickey a plate of chicken. Is it really? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, that's very cool. Well, um, <laughs> about a couple years after I started collecting, I was probably about 11 years old. My mom came home from work, and a friend of hers, a co-worker she worked with, had bought a house. And so mom was going to go over and, you know, help paint and get this house ready. And she made me go. I didn't want to go, but I went. And uh, you're talking about being glad that I went because they ran out of paint and they had a detached garage. And they, they asked me to go out, sit, you know, get another gallon of paint in the garage. I went, I tried to open the door. You couldn't even hardly open the door. 
and I looked down and it was, I mean, it was this like this. The whole garage was just covered with baseball cards. Oh my gosh. Fifties and sixties baseball cards. Oh boy. So I came They've back been there for a while. Mm hmm. Well, whoever lived there before left them. Oh my gosh. And so I went back and told my mom and her friend said, yeah, we've actually threw some away already, you know? <laughs> and she said I could have them. Well, the only thing I had was the old black hefty garbage sacks, you know? And I filled up mm, five or six of those. So what'd you find in those? Uh, a few 56, from 56 to 67. So about a 10 year span. Right. What players that really and, stand out? Oh, there's mantles, you know. What uh, kind of shape? Those are in pretty good shape. Yeah, I still have them today. This is one of his most coveted pieces, an ordinary home plate with dozens of extraordinary names on it. It's signed by 70 big leaguers, all but four of them Hall of Famers. There's two Negro leaguers in, not in the Hall of Fame yet. Of course, Pete Rose and Roger Clemens. The star-studded treasure is inside a wood and glass display case. No one steps on this home plate. Hey, I, I, I noticed you had Ty Cobb. Yep, letter I bought yep. years ago in a scrapbook of Cobb. And it's on the front, a guy had wrote to Ty Cobb for his autograph and Cobb misplaced the letter. So he writes, you know, your letter was misplaced, just came across it today. Sorry and hope you will be happy with this. Sincerely, Ty Cobb. So he what, signed what it Cobb year? there and he signed it again down what there. What year is that? It's dated uh, 1938, September 10th, right. 1938. Yeah. Would you say that's your, your greatest prize? No. <laughs> All right, what's your greatest prize? Hodges powers one towards left center, but Mantle sprints over for the catch. Mickey saves the day. Ah, uh, my Mickey Mantle rookie cards. Right, it's probably not with us right now, right? I'm right here. Oh, you have it right here. I went to the safety box to okay. see them, so. My wife about divorced me last year because this is the 51, his real rookie card, the 51 Bowman. And, but this is the card that everybody wants, the 52 tops. The story is there was a lot of these that weren't that didn't sell and they were returned to tops and Cy Berger uh, went out on a barge and dumped them in the Hudson River. Wow. So a lot of these mantles are yeah. in the bottom of the Hudson yeah. somewhere. You know. yeah. How did you come across this one? I bought it um, 15 years ago. You had to pay a pretty penny for that. I paid $5,000 for it. Right. And I was telling you, Tracy about divorced me about a year ago, a guy, um, we were chatting on one of the sites and uh, he had seen the card I'd posted on there for somebody else to see and he wanted to know where I lived and I told him. And he, about 15 minutes later, he said, I can be in Tulsa on Thursday. Right. Can you meet me at Tulsa airport? Right. I'll bring $50,000 cash. You bring that card. I'll buy the card, you take the cash, I'll get back on the plane and go, go back to New Jersey. That was tempting, wasn't it? No, I told no. him no. I said it's not for sale. Wow. No. Tracy! Yeah. <laughs> she... Wow. She, uh... So the cards do not go down in value. They fluctuate, right? They fluctuate like right. stocks, yeah. Well, hang on. Before you take put that back in here, I may want to trade you that one. <laughs> I, I collected baseball cards basically one year back in 68. So I have a rookie card. Nolan Ryan or Johnny Bench? Nolan Ryan. So that's probably a fair trade, isn't it? I bet you don't have this card. I'm gonna tell you right now, if somebody said for Mark to meet him at the airport with give me 50 grand, Mark would be. When I said it fluctuates in price, this has. Oh, man. Right, and let's see. Your, oh. Yours have some scribbling on it uh -huh. there. Mine doesn't. The other One thing I started, I don't know why I started it, but years and years ago, I started collecting autographs of Hall of Famers on the rookie cards. And it's became a big thing now where Used to, you know, you you go to these memorabilia shows, and these guys would be guests, and you would pay twenty bucks, and you can get anything signed, you know, one, twenty bucks per autograph. Then it got to where they started charging for a price for balls, a price for bats, a price for jerseys, you know, because right. jerseys and bats sold for more, so they the players wanted more money, and uh, 
about 10 years ago, I told some friends, I said, it's going to come a day when these ball players are going to start charging a premium to sign their rookie cards because it's coming more and more mm -hmm. popular. And that day's come. I mean, they're, they're doing it. You know, Montana used to be able to get him for, you know, 75 bucks. And now he's, you know, like 150 bucks on a, on a flat, which they call, you know, like a photo and stuff, a flat. But a rookie card's $600. Huh. Why is it the rookie cards are so popular? It's just, I don't know why they're so popular right Is it now. because no one really knew who Nolan Ryan was when he was a rookie? Well, it, and they just sell for a lot of money now. Trading cards and their value are all about popularity, rarity, and quality. A card in better condition will always fetch more money. Taylor often sends in his cards to be officially graded on condition. In his latest batch of mailings, he included my card. I can go to the post office and get them mailed out tonight. So they'll have them tomorrow, and hopefully we'll have them back in about a month. Bradshaw, your card's in the mail. My one and only card against his 150,000. I have a ways to go. Okay, so Mickey Mantle. What else do you have that uh, would be in the, the top five or so that? Um, Mantle, Hank Aaron, uh, I got a Hank Aaron rookie card signed. Uh, of course, stuff of my uncle and uh, Johnny Bench. I mean, Mickey Mantle and Johnny Bench are my two guys, for, right. you know, being from Oklahoma. And, you know, just like I said, getting to be around Mickey all those times and, and everything. And then, you know, now, I've got to meet Johnny and I've got to be around him and you know he knows who I am. I just got to, a friend of mine retired, that I went to school with, retired out of the military, out of the army. Mm -hmm. And Johnny was in the reserves from 66 to 72. And my friend always, he's always bringing up this photo of Johnny Benz in an army uniform. So we contacted Johnny, told him about my friend and he said, yeah, absolutely, send it to me. So I sent it to him, and he signed it, you know, to Randy, thanks for your service. Johnny Bench, E4, 1966 to 72. E4 was his rank. And I, get, I just gave it to my buddy last week, and he he, he was speechless, you know. That's yeah. neat. Yeah. So when you met these um, players, your heroes, were you sometimes disappointed on how they acted, <laughs> or was it up to your expectation? There's been a few disappointments, yeah. Um, but for the most part, they, they've been good. I mean, I probably have one bad story for every hundred good stories, you know. What was Mickey like? Mickey was good. Uh, I can't say anything bad about Mickey. The only thing which was, you know, well known is Mickey's drinking. And, uh, you know, after a while, it just wasn't good to be around Mickey, you know. Uh, one year, at the golf tournament, my friend came with me and he brought his recorder, you know, back then with the big, big ones and uh, with the VCR tape in it. And Mickey let us set it up. Mickey stayed at one hole. So the foursome would come in and uh, you could put a $20 wager and your ball got closer to the hole than Mickey. And if you did, you got an autograph, you had your choice, an autograph ball or autograph copy of his book, The Mick. And, you know, just the fun we was having all day and everything. And then, you know, later that afternoon, he said, like, look, and he goes, you know, Done. he knew he knew he was Done. getting to that point, you know, and he just said, cut it off. And, uh, but no, Mickey, Mickey was fun. <laughs> he was fun to be around. The guy that, you know, everybody is always, shocked about when I say what a nice guy he was, was Billy Martin. Yeah. Yeah, he was a hothead, wasn't he? Billy, no, he was... But not in not in person, no, off no. the field. Billy Billy was a great guy. I mean, you would never think that guy and the ones you see on the, you know, kicking dirt and the umpire and stuff were the same guy, you <laughs> That's know? That's funny. That was an yeah. act, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. He and Steinbrenner, you know, they, they went at it a few times, a didn't few they? A few times. If Steinbrenner had left him alone, I think the Yankees would have won a couple more World Series. But... How many times was he fired and rehired? Six times, I think. <laughs> yeah. Those were the best years, yeah. right? Yeah. The yeah. 70s. Yeah. And those were good years. Reggie. Yeah. First time I met Reggie was in an autograph signing in Kansas City. And it was the same. It was the end of the tw actual 25th anniversary of the day he had the three home runs against your Dodgers. Yeah, you know, I remember that. Remember that World Se Series? 77. Yeah. Yeah. 
I remember. I got a photo sometime yeah. up here of that day. That was a bad day. That was a great day. <laughs> Are you still pursuing um, baseball players to get their autograph? Trying. It's getting hard. It's getting very hard to, to get autographs these days from ball players. It's hard to get autographs from the stars, you know, the you know, the so-called prospects coming up in double A, you know, here at Driller Park. I mean, it's it's tough. The hobby of collecting sports memorabilia took a big turn since the beginning of the pandemic in an unexpected way. The trading card industry boomed as collectors rediscovered the hobby or dug even deeper into it while the world was shut down. Taylor says cards are selling for record prices. Remember, he has 150,000 of them. So many, if not most of them, have gone up in price. He calls it a crazy time. Taylor says he has cars that he bought for $30 that are now selling for $10,000 and $20,000. How's that for a return on your investment? Who's one of your favorite players right now? Aaron Judge and Mike Trout. That's the two. Um, Have you met them? I've met Judge. I haven't met Trout. I've gotten close to Trout, but I didn't. I just, you know, didn't I, come over to me. But how'd you uh, meet Judge? Uh, we got a friend that works for the Rangers and got me a field pass. And I was down before the game during BP, and Judge kept coming over and talking to these people next to me, and go back and his turn in the cage, take some swings, come back. Well, at the end of the batting practice, you know, they're getting ready to leave and these four people want their picture taken with Aaron Judge. So the security guard, you know, holds up the rope and they go under. Well, then they're all there with Judge posing and there's no one to take their photo. So I got their camera, took the photo and Judge is telling bye to them. And me and my friend are sitting, standing next to him, you know, and he just turns to us and says, hey, thanks for doing that, you know, and is there, you got anything you want me to sign? So he signed a card for me and my friend and, and I went to, you know, thank him. And he just reached out and just grabbed me by the neck and gave me the old bro hug and patted me on the back and said, you know, see you again sometime or something. And, and I, I thanked him again and he left. And then, you know, I turned my Wi-Fi off my phone, got back to the hotel that night, turned it on and my phone exploded. All these collecting friends of mine's out in New York. The cameraman came up about that time, was filming this and uh, it would end up being the fadeaway for the commercial, you know, here's me and Aaron Judge, and he's signing for me, and the next thing he's talking to me, then he's giving me a hug, bye. And all these friends in New York going, man, you never told me you were friends with Aaron Judge. That's and you a know. great story. And uh, so. So the question I, I've got here, you've got all of this memorabilia. What's going to happen with this? Taylor's collection is getting so large, he told me he's looking for a bigger home. His reputation for collecting sports memorabilia even reached across the pond. A few years ago, he was interviewed by actor Tom Felton, who played Harry Potter's Draco Malfoy for a BBC documentary on why people collect stuff. You know, like my wife says, this everybody says stuff about it. You know, why don't y'all sell this stuff? And she says, you know, this is like his 401k. Yeah. And um, I told Tracy a few years ago that I'll, I'll be uh, 56 this year. And I told her when I turned 60, I think I'm going to sell it. I'm just going to, you know, I've got friends in the auction, in the, you know, auction companies, big auction companies. And uh, they're just waiting for the phone call. It's like, yeah. come and get it. Yeah, you, know? you mentioned this is better than a 401k, which I have, which goes down and <laughs> down. And, and you can watch this it. Doesn't, well, this doesn't go it's, down, It's does crazy, it? Mark, that cards of Mickey Mantle that I bought as a kid, you know, I now have, have all the Mickey Mantle's regular issued tops and Bowman cards. I pay 30 bucks for them as a kid, you know, 70s, early 80s. You know, they're four and $5,000 a piece now. And I look at it, I'm like, this is crazy. Yeah. I just, every time I see something, what it sells for in a grade that I got of that same card, I just, you you're know. Tempt, you're starting to get tempted. I, now, I show you? it to Tracy and I'm like, this is nuts. I would, I would probably, you know, like that picture of Mickey over there to Robert, my best wish is your friend Mickey Mantle. I, I would never sell that. That's awesome. And Yeah, that's so personal, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. Right. 
Well, what a great start to the baseball season. I well, think. Thank um, you. I'm glad we're having a baseball well, season. Yeah, for sure. This is it. Uh, go Dodgers, go right? Go Dodgers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to count that World Series from two years ago? <laughs> sure, we sure are. Uh, All right. Yeah. The world champion New York Yankees hold maneuvers at Fort Lauderdale with their pitching mainstays, 25-game winner Whitey Ford and top reliever Luis Arroyo, and their big siege guns, Johnny Blanchard, Bill Scowron, Elston Howard, Mickey Mantle, Yogi Berra, and Roger Maris. Mickey Mantle steps in. Going, going, a home run for the Yankees' great slugger. We hope you've enjoyed our podcast and thank you for spending your time with us. If you like it, please hit the subscribe button. We'll see you next time for another episode of Let's Talk. Let's Talk.